Good here. morning, everybody. It is 10 a.m. on January 2nd, 2020. Um, Happy New Year, everybody, and I'm calling to order the meeting of the Story County Board of Supervisors. So let's we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance, if you like to join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, First order of business then would be adoption of a, the agenda. If there aren't any changes that we need to do, to uh, make, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Uh, oh, 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 yes, Sorry, yes. Agenda. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, you have, you have this. No, mm -hmm. um, on your agenda, I wrote in red. The consent? Yeah. Well, we'll, you, you'll do it then. we'll do it then. Okay. 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 I'll second that motion. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Uh, Edens? Aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Edens? Aye. 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 Merck and I. I'll get the hang of this. I've been gone a couple weeks. Okay, next we have public comment number one. For any members of the public who would like to address topics on today's agenda, if there is anybody who would like to, uh, please move to the microphone. Seeing nobody move to the microphone, I'll close public comment session one. And then we will go to organization of the board. Uh, first, we have election of officers for uh, calendar year 2020. I would entertain a motion. I move that we appoint Linda Merkin as our chair for 2020. Second the motion. Okay. Thank you. Any discussion? Olson? Aye. Edens? Aye. Merkin? Aye. Would entertain a motion for vice chair? I guess I hadn't even thought about vice chair because we hadn't had one in the past. Is that something that we need to do or? Yeah, we probably should. Probably should, should. Probably should have a mm -hmm. motion for doing that. Right. We operate a little differently after the switchover last mm -hmm. year. I get you. I get you. Okay. I just, I was just thinking that we only had to have a no. chair. We didn't have we, to have a no. We, we should have a vice chair. Vice chair. Um, mm -hmm. um I know I have a feeling we're probably both interested in being vice chair, Lars. Um, here's where I feel about this, is that um, in the event of some kind of continuity for this year, okay, it's probably better that you run with a little bit more experience. I know that you would like to do that for this year. Was, I think I got a hint out of that, out of something that came out of the sheriff's office. So, um, you know, but I, as far as I'm concerned, it's more of a learning experience. If you want to take it on as a learning experience, I don't have a real big problem with that, you know. Um, I've been very pleased with how the board has operated for the last about, I think, about three months in that it's been a very collaborative effort and that there has been more sharing at the board table. There's been more sharing, people looking back and forth about what is it doing so that we're not stepping on each other's toes, that we're aware as we're getting out there into the community and that they're sharing. And so um, in the event, if you want to take it on, Lisa, I know there's a big push out there for you to take it on. And uh, yeah, I have some very personal feelings about that. But would you like to be chair? I'll be have vice chair. I'll just be just happy to go ahead and make you vice chair. <laughs> I nom nomination. Sure. Sure, then I will second that. Well, I Oh, yeah, I guess you second I that. Second. that. Yeah. <laughs> I will second it. Is there any further discussion? I guess my one comment would be is, I mean, I don't know how you got an inkling from the sheriff's office. I mean, that's oh, when you get a, a letter addressed to Linda Merck in the chair and Lisa Hedden's the vice chair and Loris Olson asking, you know, the address to the three of us. Yes. Uh -huh. You didn't. OK. I so, guess I don't recall seeing that letter. I was on so, the top of the letterhead. It was the request for the uh, expanding of the Cook's hours to full time. Oh, I guess I. Yeah. I, I didn't even recognize so, that. So, yeah. So oh, yeah. I ask that in the event that you do have to take over some powers, you use it judiciously and remember that um, there are some things that happen between boards of supervisors that no other elected official or staff member would be aware of. And I had those conversations over the previous two years. And it's part of how you are able to function as a board. Sure. Sure. Okay. Sure. Is there any further discussion? Then we'll vote. Olson? Aye. 
Edens? Aye. Merkin, aye. Motion carried. Thank you. We do not have any, uh, oh, next, set day and time of regular meetings. Um, is there a motion? I uh, <clears throat> move to set the 2020 schedule for regular board meetings as Tuesday at 10 a.m. with the option to modify as necessary. I'll second that motion. Okay. Okay. Tuesday's worked well. Any discussion? Olson? Aye. Higgins? Aye. Merkin, aye. Motion carries. It's also been suggested to me that as part of setting the day and time by regular meetings, we set a definition of a limited agenda. The suggestion was the definition of limited agenda means it will contain no public hearings, no additional items, no agency or department reports, and no other reports. And that's just um, so when we say we're going to have a limited agenda, everybody knows what that means. That's the suggestion that was given. Is there a motion to that effect? I'll make the motion that we uh, utilize that um, uh, definition uh, for meaning limited agenda because um, I do think it's kind of ambiguous at this particular this particular time. Um, I second. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah, I do have some discussion on it. I understand why the request has come in. Um, we always need to keep the option that a last minute item will go on a limited agenda that we for us to limit ourselves this is just and i think a, a good example has just been this last um this this last december between absences <clears throat> looking for looking uh, forward about an employee taking a medical leave um looking at the flu season, you know, you name it, and we've pulled problems from every category, and I think we've done a pretty good job of rolling with it, but we did end up having to add some items to the agenda. Would you agenda. want to amend the motion to say that exceptions may be made by the chair? Um, I think that that would be a good amendment. Yeah. Are you I making that amendment? I will make that motion, and I will support that. I will second that okay. motion. So amendment. first, let's vote on the amended mm -hmm. amendment to the motion. Mm -hmm. Exceptions may be made by the chair. Olson? Aye. Hiddens? Aye. Merkin? Aye. Now let's vote on the amended motion and Hiddens? Aye. Olson? Aye. Merkin? Aye. Thank you. Done. Agency reports. We have none. Consideration of minutes. Did we have minutes? We did. They we were did. very we short. Did. They were short oh, minutes. Oh, okay. I remember now. Is mm -hmm. there a motion to approve the minutes? I will move approval. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? If not, Olson? Aye. Hedens? Aye. Merkin? Aye. Minutes are approved. Consideration of personnel actions? Uh, there was the one. I move approval. Okay. Yeah, I'll second that motion. Okay. Olson? Aye. Pedens? Aye. Merkin? Aye. Okay. Consent agenda. I'm going to pull item five because under 2020 Condemnation Commission, we have Matt Martison of Nevada listed as mm -hmm. one person, and Brilliant. Matt has gone on to a um, I think he's working in Council Bluffs now, mm -hmm. so he's no longer available. So I would pull that so we can vote on the uh, condemna Condemnation Commission separately. I would move approval of the consent agenda with the exception of item five. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? Olson? Aye. Hedden? Aye. Merkin? Aye. Now we will uh, consider item five on the consent agenda, the Condemnation Commission. Entertain a motion. Um, so I would move approval of appointment for the 2020 Condem Condemnation Commission with the exception of Matt Mardson um, uh, serving from Nevada. I'm going to second that. Okay. Any discussion? Edens? Aye. Olson? Aye. Merkin? Aye. Thank you. So then we will go back to 
objection. Ah, we're under public hearing items then, correct? There are yes, but there is none. Yeah. And there are none. So we'll go on to additional items. And the first item, discussion and consideration of appointment of supervisors as representatives for calendar year 2020. And I'm just going to make the statement that some of these appointments are uh, per code section. Some of them are per 28E agreements that we um, as the supervisors are part of. And some of them are really, some are really voluntary. It's either the agency has bylaws or requests that a county supervisor serve. Um, that's an, a list uh, that we're working on right now to really delineate more of which are which. But in the meantime, um, I think about five of these are voluntary, but I would suggest that we go ahead and approve them all because anyway, even though we know it's kind of a, a, a mix of different types of appointments. Is there a problem with that? I don't, I don't think there's a problem, but I think that um, when uh, we entered into this year, when I was chair, um, uh, worked hard on it, and, and you've seen, I took Jessica Reynolds' uh, letter from the 2016, also the notes mm -hmm. that Deb Shildroth had accumulated, and the intent in dropping some of this off was the list to make it very clear to the public about those that we were obligated to serve on versus those that over time had been tradition, et cetera, especially when it came to the asset agencies. Um, because there was one former supervisor who had served on a couple of asset agencies and was pretty adamant about continuing to serve on those boards, and yet there were complaints from other asset agencies about how come we didn't get a supervisor. And um, so that was one of the factors. So um, I, I think it's very important to note that, that we need to, yeah, uh, I'm glad that uh, we're going to clean this up again. Um, and also then decide if we approve these today, then we're going to also be taking a look at like, uh, you know, this came to our attention because community and family services uh, resources wasn't on there. And as a voluntary, I've sat on long before I was a supervisor. Okay. Um, so that we'll have to add more later on. And then the other issue I think is do we want to have, do we want to designate that these are either voluntary as you're looking into or, you know, um, in the situation with Prairie Rivers. Prairie Rivers is also voluntary. And that it says in the parentheses on that one, it says by invitation. Okay, so then I think we also will need to decide how we want to let the public know about which one of these are serving on it. And, and, and uh, so it's not a simple motion, but it's, you know, as far as I, I don't, I'd like to see us clean up uh, in the next month or whatever, go back and clean these up so that the public's very clear about what we're sitting on and why. And it was just pointed out to me that we may, may even need to go back because the county attorney's letter is a few years old and there's Correct. been some changes since that. Right. And that's what we're right. relying on. And I even looked at one code section and said, oh, I think we need to update this. So I, I think it's good to start out and read the code sections because there's one that says, oh, yeah, it's mandatory for the code. Well, what it turned out is forming the conservation board is mandatory by code. Correct. But it's not mandated by code that a, board of, a, a member of the board of supervisors serve on conservation, which is why it's ex officio. But right. so there's some things like that. I think we now need to not just say, OK, there's a code section that sets up a board. I think we need to read it clearly and say, but does it require that, that the board of supervisors and have somebody on it? Or sometimes it's appoint somebody else to it. And, and I do think it would be good to have more clarification of whether it is by code 28 year voluntary, mm -hmm. because we do serve on so many boards and commissions, some that mm -hmm. are required and some that we are invited or, or it is by their agency bylaws for us to be on. Um, and when we talk at this table about certain boards, what's going on um, and information, we don't have a clear, I think the general public probably thinks, okay, these are ones they're all mandated to be on. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it would be good as we continue to work on this, just to clear it up and say, yes, we are serving on these and to recognize in our minutes which ones we are serving on, but to be very clear as to which ones we are mandated mm -hmm. um, to serve on. So my motion would be that um, we approve these as presented for the time being. 
um, with note that we will come back after uh, the research is done to make further designations as needed for clarity. And I would second that, because I do think it does need to have some more clarity in here, definitely. Okay, the motion and the second. Good discussion. Is there any further discussion? No. Okay. If not, then I would entertain a motion. She made the motion. I'm sorry. Excuse me. It's okay. <laughs> Good. Okay, Olson. Aye. Edmund. Aye. Merkin. Aye. Approved. Okay, next. Discussion and consideration of Resolution 20-49, 2020 Central Iowa Regional Transportation Planning Alliance appointments. Is there any, any discussion about that? It's just required, it, it, it's a different type of documentation that is required by CERPA as opposed to some of the other. Okay, so we've already basically made the made the designation. We just right. need to approve the resolution. Correct. Is there a motion to approve the resolution? I make the motion to approve resolution 20-49 uh, for the 2020 Central Iowa Regional Transportation Planning Alliance appointments. Is there a second? And I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, Heavens? Aye. Olson? Aye. Merkin? Aye. We've passed it. Next, we have discussion and consideration of options to fill the hey, upcoming she was just right vacancy, and Lucy Martin is with us now. That's thanks to Ted. Ah. Good morning. Good, Good morning. Good morning. We really need to stop meeting like this. That's okay. <laughs> um, Jessica Reynolds has uh, submitted to you um, that she is resigning. Uh, effective February 7th. So I've updated my vacancy presentation, which is, this, I think this is the fourth time I've done this one, in various options. So that was, that's nice for me. Just have to reread the code and update myself. Um, before I start, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about several different code sections. So I've printed those off for you to look at. If you have additional questions, don't mention that way. Also, it includes the requirements for time. So you have that as well. If you want me to send that to you in PDF form, because there's a, the code, if you're familiar with it, links it to itself in a lot of different ways. So mm -hmm. this isn't every single code section, but it's it's the bulk of them. Um, starting with section 69.14a. So <clears throat> these are your options. You can fill the vacancy either by appointment um, or by special election. If you opt for appointment, uh, that has to be made within 40 days of the vacancy occurring. So the clock would start then on February 7th. Um, a special election says it shall be held at the earliest practicable date. Practicable date is not ever defined in the Code of Iowa, so that's up to me. Um, and then even if you make an appointment, uh, citizens may still petition for a special election within 14 days of that appointment being made. So that is the grand overview of the process. Um, and qualifications for county attorney. A uh, person must be a registered voter of the county and be admitted to practice of law in the courts of Iowa and also cannot be suspended from the practice of law or had the license revoked in Iowa or any other state of the nation. So comparing the two options that are available to you, um, we do have five special elections on March 3rd. Ideally, we would have combined with that because we already have, you know, a process in place. But the code is very specific that we cannot combine election of this type with a school election, and those are five school elections. So then we also have, um, because the most of those school districts also cross county boundaries, we have a two-tiered canvas for that. So uh, that pushes me up to Tuesday, March 24th, for the earliest we could withhold that election. Uh, 
the candidate filing deadline then would be uh, Friday, Feb February 28th, and I am the filing officer for such an election. And then the canvas for that election, and it, it could be later than that, but that's the earliest time we could have it. Um, canvas is the week following, and then uh, with any, uh, any election to fill a vacant seat, um, the candidate a successful candidate is sworn in immediately after the certificate of election is issued. So we would do that right after campus. If you opt for an appointment, um, you have to publish notice of intention to appoint, uh, and it's like you would do for a public hearing, so um, at least four days before a meeting where you would consider that. Um, Appointment must occur no later than March 17th, so that's within 40 days after the occurrence of the vacancy. And then the appointee would also have to be sworn in no later than that date. Um, if you opt for an appointment, citizens may petition uh, to hold a special election. Um, the signature number for that is 10 percent of the vote for either governor, which is the last general election we had, or president. And so that would be 4,283 signatures. So. Do you want us to wait until the end or ask for slide questions? Um, I do have a, I have a slide at the end that says questions, but um, okay. I'm happy to. I saw that. But so okay. it's it's a pretty short presentation. Okay. Um, and we can go back to any slide as well. So um, if you opt for a special election, um, then it would go on the ballot as county attorney to fill vacancy, and then uh, whoever was successful in that election is elected for the residue of the term. Um, and so that would be, uh, the, the seat is up again then in 2022. Um, however, if you do make this op go for this option, then the board seat that is currently filled by appointment will also go on the ballot because you are creating the next pending election. So and those so those two seats would go on the ballot, and then both those candidates would be elected to uh, fill the residue of the term. Uh, if you opt for an appointment, then the next pending election is in this November. Um, we do have a primary election, but that is strictly for nominating partisan candidates. So um, again, if somebody's uh, elected on November 3rd, then they would be sworn in immediately following canvas. Um, because it is a partisan office, it would also appear on the June 2nd primary for those parties to nominate candidates for November 3rd. Um, but it doesn't, anytime you have a vacancy, it doesn't change the terms. It's not like we reset the clock on when we elect a county attorney in Story County. So uh, it doesn't change the term of the office. The seat will, will be up on its regular cycle. Um, in 2022. So um, estimated costs, and these are really estimated. Um, I'm assuming that I can use vote centers. I'm guessing about $30,000. Uh, if you go for an appointment, you have a regular meeting. You might wish to do it outside of your regular meeting schedule. Um, so this assumption, um, if we have to have uh, our clerk come in and do a night meeting, then there's overtime for her, but that's essentially the cost of also the publication cost for the notice of appointment. So a little more information about the election option. Um, how are candidates nominated? Partisan candidates would be nominated. Um, their the respective parties and the two recognized parties in Iowa are the Democratic and Republican parties. They would reconvene a, a county convention and nominate uh, candidates, and then the candidates would file a certificate, um, a convention certificate, and an affidavit of candidacy. Nonpartisan candidates would file a, a would circulate a nomination petition. They would need at least 250 signatures, which they would file um, also with the affidavit of candidacy. Um, Nonparty political organizations they can nominate candidates either by nominating convention or by circulating a nominating petition. Um, and then the NPPOs that we have, which is short for non-party political organization, um, are the Libertarians and the Green Parties. Um, 
they have both had party status in the past, but they are not, uh, they do not have party standing at this date. So I would be the filing clerk for any special election. Uh, again, the ear earliest practical date is March 24th, so I'm just using that as an assumption. If you chose something later, uh, this would affect those dates. Um, and candidates would need to file no later than um, Friday, February 28th at 5 p.m. So this is a real uh, guess for me because we have not had a countywide special election, I think, since 1999, which is before I worked in the auditor's office. Um, and Story County has changed pretty dramatically in that time in terms of population, but uh, I'm guessing anywhere from five to 15%. Uh, March can be really tricky in terms of weather. So unfortunately, weather has a has pretty uh, noticeable impact on any type of election. If it's a sunny day, we have more people turn out. Um, it would also depend on the number of candidates. We did have, recently have a special election last August, but there's only, it was an uncontested election. So um, whether it's contested or not, we'll, we'll drive turnout and then absentee voting activity. So if there's a big push um, by parties to uh, collect absentee ballots or petition for uh, satellite voting, um, if candidates are going door to door, that can really uh, change the number of votes cast in an election. So now I'm happy to take any questions and I hope I have answers for you today. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I have a Hi. question too. So um, my first question um, uh, having to do with the timeline comparison slide. Okay, well, let's go okay. back to that. Okay, so it says the appointment must be made, must be done no later than March 17th, but could we not decide to start, if we went with an appointment, mm -hmm. could we not start the process now, do the screening, et cetera, and have it work so that as of Jessica Reynolds' date of February 7th, her last day, or that's a fe actually February 6th is her last day, correct? As her her letter attorney. said February 7th. All right, so she'd be running through, I believe it's Monday at 5, 4.30 now, all right, um, then um, that person could be sworn in at, at uh, 4.31, okay, on February 7th if we did an appointment, correct? We don't have to She wait didn't specify a time when Stephen Holmes um, resigned. Mm -hmm. He actually specified noon, noon so, so there, uh, but she just says February 7th, so what, yes, you can do the appointment process. You, you can you can make that decision, and, and as the auditor, I would prefer you make a decision as soon as is comfortable for the board, um, whatever option you choose. You just cannot actually make an appointment until the vacancy exists. So yes, you can you can publish notice. You can say we're going to meet on X day and make an appointment. Um, you can collect information, but you cannot actually make the appointment until the office is vacant. So we would then just get published that we would have that notice. That would be one yeah. option. As long as you just, um, yes, you have just have that four to 20 day window to publish the notice that you're going to do that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, you can decide, I guess the options for you today is you can decide today what to do. You can decide next week, at next week's meeting what to do at a later date. Um, just know that starting February 7th, that 40-day clock starts running. Um, and the code specifically says, the board may publish notice in advance if an elected official submits a resignation to take effect at a future date. So yeah, the, the code doesn't make you wait until that vacancy exists to actually take any action. You just, you just can't um, say, yes, we're gonna appoint and, the, and appoint somebody next week. You know, you have to wait until mm -hmm. till that. Vacancy but in the event that we have an appointment, if we choose appointment, we have an appointment process that goes past February 7th. The real, the date is March 17th. Yeah, I, I gave you sort of like the, the sure. furthest out you can go, okay. uh, assuming that you probably take action prior to that. But um, other questions? 
Well, at least ask one and then I'll ask one. Yeah, yeah. So just kind of on that line, and then I have another one too. So um, are you saying that if we went with the appointment, and let's say we're just going with the February 7th date of Jessica's last date, would you then have to post the notice of the appointment for whomever you end up appointing if we go with the appointment round four days after Jessica leaves, or can you make that notice ahead of time so that you could could do it on that Tuesday right afterwards where she yes, would know Yes, the okay. latter, yeah. So you can publish the notice and then say we're going to, so that would be, I guess, the meeting on the 11th? Is that? Is that the Tuesday? No, can, so if, if the 7th is a Monday, for example. I thought example, the 7th was a Friday. Friday. Is that a Friday? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. so I think you, that's where the confusion is. We were saying yeah. Monday or night. I, I, no, I just didn't have my calendar. So, okay. So you so could do it that way. So then have it the next Tuesday. It's calendar days, not working days. Or we can set a special meeting. Sure. It says 40 days. It does not say business days or, yeah, it's always, it's it's just 40 days. Straight 40 days. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. So I'll jump on yours because it follows right through this and then come yeah. back. Yeah, that's fine. Because my next question is, is if we don't do it simultaneously almost, or is it she's done on Friday and then we set a special meeting for 431 on Friday or whatever to appoint someone, all right, we're going to have a gap. We're, and, and unlike when we have a gap in the Board of Supervisors, we've got two other supervisors sitting here to conduct business. And um, so uh, my question is, is by code or whatever, does it transfer down that who then becomes the acting county attorney be her, I believe the term is first assistant. assistant attorney. I see Alyssa nodding yes, thinks so. And I thought maybe somebody would be here this morning from the attorney's office, but I didn't know for sure. But that's one of my questions is if this gap, whether that gap is a weekend or whether that gap takes us all the way until March 17th, which is the 40 days on, is where exactly do we stand legally? I know I see a reporter Stacey Heritage is out here. You have two deputies, right? Oh, one. Oh, one. Sorry. Okay. So we know where that transition occurs. I mean, it's very clear about who's got authority over what, right? Ditto for you. Uh, Lucy, with your, your functions, correct? You have two deputies. And yeah, I should have to go to the deputy and, and vacancy in my office, actually, the treasurer is the acting auditor. Oh, okay. And so I All think right. it's the same with the report. The three of us, I think, share. Um, okay. I don't think you'll be without legal representation. You still have your civil attorney. You still have those people are all there. Uh, I don't know what the succession exactly but, says. But I do have questions about it from an administrative standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, you know, who's, who's running the various departments or, or within that I office? I'll yeah. volunteer to follow up with the county attorney to see what their normal procedure is because the county attorney sometimes might be gone. Right. But the so, difference is that right. there's there's still a person in that seat. So, yeah. So, yeah, sure. please. I would yeah, like I to do that. That's information I think we need to know because we don't have a designated backup or a plan, a succession plan, if you will, that's laid out by code. So, Lisa, yeah. back to you. Yeah, doing a quick look. I don't, I don't see anything. So that's yeah. a good thing. Um, so if we would go um, again with the uh, uh, the appointment um, and uh, where it references the petition. So is that a petition? <clears throat> Explain to me the timeline of the petition. Is the petition? Uh, set if you if the person's already appointed or if you make the determination you want to appoint and then they could it's file within the 14 days whichever is is later so like if you appoint somebody just for purposes of hypotheticals if you appoint somebody on February 11th they have 14 days to file a petition that so, gets filed with me to and signatures can be collected at any time but they have to submit it within that Two week period. So it could be 14 days after the person's appointed. Yeah. That, okay, that's what I just so, wanted clarification. That's what I thought, but I was not yeah, 100% it's, sure. It's, on. Um, it's, yeah, it's so, two weeks after that. So then there's sort of that hold your breath moment. Right, 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 right. So, okay, okay. Any other questions? Alyssa? No. I wonder if you might be 
I'm able to answer a couple questions about the appointment process. Oh, sure. And we talked about it a little bit the other day. Alyssa was here when the last appointment was made. Right. So it's actually pretty recent that you had a county mm -hmm. attorney resignation. Um, that was a little different because it did specify a noon vacancy time. As I read the code, February 7th would go up until 11.59 of that day. So um, it doesn't say work day. It just so she didn't specify a time. So that's I'm assuming she's she's uh, the county attorney until February 8th takes over at midnight on Friday. That, that's fine. Yeah. And my question was, um, do you recall that I know you had a process where it was the vacancy was posted? The, the board at that time chose to use our application system to take okay. applications for the county attorney. Um, they had specific questions and, and submission requirements as far as you know, or writing samples, different things like that, so they could collect prior to the appointment to see kind of um, what their candidates were. And we also wanted to collect the veterans preference question on all appointments, so they utilized that. Off the top of your head, do you remember about how long that process took as you had it set up? How long the posting was? Mm -hmm. um, or, or just until? until a minimum of 10 days for veterans preference, so it was at least 10 and I, I'd have to go back and look. I'd still have to post it. Okay. Go and see whether it was a two-week posting. But you want to give a, if you're going to mm -hmm. ask an applicant to put together certain submission papers, mm -hmm. whatever, you want to give them adequate time to get that put together. You don't want to just say, we need it in a short time frame. Yes, so after that, then there's reviewing, potentially scoring, yep. um, the board wants to allowing them. presentations if we wanted to do wanted that to kind of thing. It was similar to what um, the process has been for the board of If we're, I'm just thinking, if we are interested in that potential of going that way, would it take you very long to put together a timeline just so we'd know? Yeah, well, I'll just go back to the old timeline and, and pull up those documents and okay. it's not very difficult. So my guess is it probably would go a little past February 7th. Not necessarily. No, I think the board could approve a process at board at Tuesday board meeting, and then mm -hmm. you know publications okay. go out. And everything. And you you could technically have it all done. Okay. If you wanted to appoint somebody right after the resignation, I, I don't mm -hmm. that, that's a, that's more than a month out. Mm -hmm. um, so just looking at the calendar, so you're suggesting we could have the talk about a process at our at our um, January 7th meeting and then put in potentially two weeks worth, um, whether you post it right away that day or not, you'd be looking <clears throat> probably not till the 21st or 22nd that you would give them time to get those applications in and then go through. So in the screening in the past, was there a committee that did or was it just the board that did it? So, yeah, I just don't. I didn't. I wasn't part of it when when um, Stephen Holmes uh, stepped down. So, well, um, there there were a few. There was, I believe, only one other person who was interested, and in, in, that person ended up not filing a form going through. Correct. So Jessica we was. A, yeah, we only had one applicant. Okay, gotcha. But so we did open it up for everybody. Right. Sure. And, yeah. So. Um, I don't know what this will do. It's a little different situation in that, you know, uh, um, uh, as far as how many applicants we will get. But let's face it, we're not doing a regional search here. Right. I mean, they have to be from Story County and prices. And yeah, so we're talking about that there will be a, a limited here. Um, I'm more looking at the time frame and, you know, about what happens if we've got a gap here is because we are in budget month in January. I'm prone to, even though we'll maybe 
discuss on Tuesday the real specifics about how we do this screening. Um, but I'm, I'm very dedicated to seeing that it be a good, thorough screening process, including presentations. I was impressed about how the search was handled and the process that uh, the recorder, the treasurer, and the auditor went through to make the appointment for, for you. Um, and um, so I like that, and I feel very comfortable following that, but we, we, the timing here is difficult to make that February 7th, I feel, for us. One of the things I know I'm going to want to do um, and I, uh, is I want to reach out to the police chiefs and the sheriff and I want to ask about what in their perfect candidate would be so that when I write my questions during that application, the follow-up to the presentations. Um, I think it's interesting, our backgrounds. I was thinking about our three backgrounds here. Linda, you clearly have decades of working with um, attorneys dealing in the criminal end of the process. Several. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's so, let's this right. Okay. And Lisa, you've got you know a couple decades in working with uh, with attorneys from the advisory, from writing laws and whatever. So you bring an entirely different perspective in, and I bring in from covering county attorneys from and then having worked under you know a county attorney for three years. And so I think we could do a very good screening process with via the appointment. The other thing. Thing, you know that I, I, I usually would be very uh, I've been concerned about is the law doesn't give us much time to do a fair special election for anybody I mean you know how do you do a countywide seat and get the public out there to really screen the process screen these applicants etc okay fortunately we've got a pretty tight time frame between an appointment and the election of 10 months Okay, for the public then to screen and determine whether they feel we made a good decision or not, and stuff. So I, but I'd like to make sure that on our part of the process, if we do the appointment, that it's a good decision on that. So that's why I'm asking about the interim on that, uh, given our schedules in January. And I guess. Well, it, let me just ask this: Are we are we leaning any particular way now? It sounds like it. But let me confirm. How we're, are we leaning towards special election or appointment? I think through discussions, it sounds like <clears throat> we're leaning a little bit more towards appointment versus special mm -hmm. election. Uh, as a uh, yeah, I, I'd love to see special elections. I've been disappointed as we've had several entities now where we've not allowed the voice of the public to weigh in. But a special election with the type time frame that the law puts it under, I don't know, gives a, a good screening combined with the turnout of prediction with Lucy, uh, that Lucy predicts, and I think you're probably on target <laughs> there a little bit. You could be wrong. I, but, I, you know, I, I've been yeah. So, Certainly been wrong in the past, but it's it's really hard to gauge since we haven't had a, such an election in you know over right. 20 years. I don't. I one excuse that's been used in the past um, to not have a special election. I just like to address. I'm still leading to word appointment. Okay, uh, but is that we do have thirty thousand dollars to do it. Um, it's just are we best serving democracy and the citizens with the expenditure of that money. And, uh, and I think in this particular case, given the tight turnaround bef relatively with it being on the ballot, would be we're still serving by doing the appointment and not spending the money. So, yeah. Okay, so, so do you need a motion? Um, are we ready to vote? I mean, if, if we are sure of which way we want to go, and we decide, you know, I'd say let's decide and get it, get things moving. So I don't understand. I, I, I guess my one last question is, since Jessica did not stipulate a time frame, so you're looking at her going till 11:59 on February 7th, then we would be looking to appoint someone on that. What is it? That Tuesday then. 
if you, you know, unless you do something meeting. special on a Saturday. Or, or, yeah, you yeah, could, yeah, or you could do something on a Monday. I don't know. If, yeah. Do, yeah. I, that's a decision for the board. Do you want to do this at a special meeting? Do you want to do it as part of your regularly mm -hmm. scheduled Tuesday meeting? So that would be our question. And I would think in the process, we would want in clarification as who would be stepping in that interim so that we are clear who that interim person would be as county I attorney. Check with the, um, I can check with the, I can check with I thought that's why they appointed a first assistant sort of county in, in the situation that there's mm -hmm. a catastrophe. I mean, mm -hmm. there has to be something right. set up. Right, right, right. But right. I could be wrong. I, we've never had to have the first assistant step into right. the county attorney role, but I know mm -hmm. other counties mm -hmm. have had situations And we could where, always Point somebody temporarily. Yeah. Right, right. You know, and if, yeah. if we, if we feel there's a need to, we could appoint somebody temporarily. Um, but let's let me first see what the process is, how they normally handle absences by the county attorney. Correct. Right. All deputies are take the oath. Um, but I'm not familiar. With I don't, that. and I don't remember if Tim took an oath. We got in a he did take they, the they, oath. So I'm pretty sure if they sworn him. Okay. Got it. So um, then my other question would be the possibility that um, if she then set, gave us a time now, her letter of resignation says as of February 7th, and possibly she, you know, uh, just didn't think about putting her time in or that she might have a reasoning there. But if she came back to us and notified that actually we received additional written information that he, she were vacating as of noon on the 7th or you know, 4 p.m. or whatever. You know, that would that would help us know related to the seventh. I, I still I'm nervous about pushing us that in 30 days and doing a clear vetting if we have several candidates and given uh, kind of that special services that are provided there. Well, I don't think we have to decide today if we were going to appoint somebody on the 11th. If that that would be ni would not be 96 hours, which is four days. So, so I, I don't think that has anything to do with our decision. I think we decide later when Alyssa brings us a timeline. Because I still have a couple questions about some, some things that you had mm -hmm. said in terms of like expectations of like what we need to do in the process that might take it past that anyway. So, um, I don't, I don't think we have to know that now, what date we would appoint, just know that we would, we would appoint as soon as we were able to. Um, if we made this decision on Tuesday, um, uh, I'm, the argument for us to wait until Tuesday to decide which way we're going to go is that something that um, is pointed out on the terms slide is that the Board of Supervisors seat currently filled by appointment would also go on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So we are actually making a decision about an election that would address both the county attorney through 2002 and for um, the seat being held by Lisa through 2022. Sorry, 22. Sorry, 22. I'm sorry. Flu will do it to you, okay? So, um, but so if there would be public that would like to give some type of feedback um, in the next, over the weekend or on Monday, headed into Tuesday about this, given really we're making a decision about two seats. Um, on the election. That's why I'd feel more comfortable us actually taking the vote on, on the 7th. It hasn't changed all my thoughts related to thinking appointments serving the public best. So, so are you saying you don't want to take a vote on whether we should appoint or have a special election at all today? You want to wait all of that till Tuesday? Or are you saying no, we could vote on either special election or appointment. And if we, if it was determined for appointment, you then make the determination as to what date you want to have set for the appointment. I'm saying I'd like to wait to vote on whether it's special election or appointment until Tuesday to give the public um, a few days to weigh in, given that there actually would be two seats on this ballot.
And that's the, that was the one that when I looked at the slide hit me, is that was the new information. Having covered this several times, sat through it, you know, and, 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 and watched what happened with the county attorney before, is there was no other seat to be on a special elect, to be on the same ballot. But on the other hand, that's not the issue in front of us. That's just a piece of information about the statute. The issue in front of us is how we want to fill the county attorney vacancy. And the question then comes, how long do you, do you wait? Because if we do get a fair amount, if we go appointment of folks, the further you put it out, the further you're going to have to have someone in an interim, potential interim mm -hmm. position. So we're talking about the difference, we're talking about a five-day difference, right? Mm -hmm. but, um, but we still could do February 7th because what triggers, the, what triggers it is when she says she's done. And our process being completed. When our process, okay, and the process being completed. So if we um, come, all right, I'm, I'm if we come on Tuesday deciding to make a vote one way or the other and we've already got our notes, we've got the information researched about what happens to any in the interim just to confirm what we think we've reasoned out here um, and to take a look at, uh, give Alyssa time to do the count, et cetera. We'll be she'll still be able to talk about you know, putting it out there uh, for two weeks or NeoGov, whatever we decide on NeoGov to do the applications what types of information we want for requirements. We'd still be able to discuss about, you know, wanting, do we want to do the interviews, uh, do the public presentations like we were done last time. So, um, so. Lucy, is it, is it, um, or excuse me, Lucy, um, uh, Alyssa, would it be 10, 10 calendar days or 10 work days that you generally just, just 10, so it could be just 10 calendar days. Yeah, that, that's how we read the, that extra. Okay, I wasn't sure if you, if you look specifically at work days. Sure, sure, sure. So, so again, if you do look at making any decision next week, you would be potentially not putting anything up for an application if we went with appointment. Mm -hmm. Potentially we go up on the 7th that Tuesday, but it may be a few days later. And then if you had um, it out for 10 days. Let me ask you, are, are you two comfortable with if um, um, looking at doing something somewhere between February 7th and doing something meaning making the appointment itself um, between the 7th and February 11th as a thought? You know, and and um, and comfortable with us being able to do the schedule uh, and the vetting process, et cetera, within 30 days, because that's really what we're talking about. Is is given that we're in budgets, it's Lisa's first budget. It's um, while well, we've all worked budgets before, as far as going through the county process, you know, when it's uh, the way I'm second. looking at the calendars, most of our um, Unless we have callbacks, just a second. The next two weeks are most of our budget meetings, our work sessions. I've got the last one on the 17th. Does that sound right to everybody? Yeah, it does. Right. And then callbacks so then, in the next week. So callbacks, if there are any, the next week. Um, and then. So there's two weeks left in January there, when we may have some callbacks, then there's the first week of February. Um, I see, so I don't see how budget work sessions will really get in our way of doing any screening or looking at applications. Okay. Because if you're talking about from the, if you're talking about posting on, let's say the eighth, 10 days gets you to the end of the second week, and those are the two weeks that we have budget work sessions. So I don't see that being an oh, issue. And I think that was back to, as I look at it, is uh, 
everybody gets so busy in January and, and just so part of the prep room work I want to do behind the scenes before I write my questions, et cetera, well, look wait, into that, wait, like I you, said, when, talking to What do you mean the, by when you write your questions? Well, I'm hoping that we will ask for public presentations and I'm hoping that just like in the appointment process that was used for uh, that seat that Lisa holds right now, in that uh, the, the three of us will ask questions afterwards. That's exactly what the recorder, the treasurer, and the auditor did, were then asked some questions. And um, I, I know I want to talk to law enforcement before I, uh, in writing some of my questions, you know. Um, okay. The way I saw the process happening before is, Lizzie, you had questions that were sent out for people to answer that was part of the application process. So those would be done by the time you post it. Those come in with the application. Now, if okay. the wants to do like an interview after the presentation, then they can do that and each ask their question. Is that interview in public then? Oh, yeah. Well, okay. That happened last time. Okay. And, and I had to go back. I don't remember whether, I mean, we only had one applicant, so I don't know if there were <coughs> questions that were asked after the, the um, presentation mm -hmm. or not. No, I don't look at the last. Could last you? Time. You think you could bring a timetable next Tuesday? Absolutely. And that could, you know. Yeah. And I can, I can, I can bring a question. I, I can have a packet. You guys can make. If you go that route, you can make decisions, supplemental questions, whatever you want to ask on an application if you choose to do so. And once again, I'd like to point out that even if in those questions that are asked of the applicants. Um, let me ask, did the recorder, the treasurer, and the auditor give you some of those questions in advance? No, I, I think I just, All right. I, I so, think in a meeting, they asked what they could have asked, and it was just prepare the same questions. Okay. So I understand you want all questions to go, I mean, you want the same questions to go to all applicants, but this position, um, <coughs> it gives us legal advice to the county um, there have been instances where that's not always been agreed upon in court then, et cetera. So you've got, you've got a legal advisement here. You've got advisement on writing our ordinances, so policy. And then you've got a large part of this office has to do with the prosecution of, of crimes. I mean, that's actually, if I understand how the split out is of the people who work in that department, is that the majority of them are connected with some type of law enforcement or um, prosecution position. All right, and so um, that when, when you go to, if you're gonna post some uniform questions, um, I'd like us to have an opportunity to uh, write some of those questions ourselves, not just have them be stock answers that were generated by HR. Well, and Maybe that, even ask the happened. staff, ask the county attorney staff. That were asked the, last time. the last questions were, you know, have you, you know, do you have so many years? Like, what, what, did, what did the board want as qualifications to be a county attorney? So. Um, have you prosecuted any, you know, felony? I mean, they had they had certain things they made up, and that's completely up to the board. It's not. It wasn't specific questions, situational questions. They, I would recommend asking those in in an interview process because you're going to get their response at that time. You're not giving them two weeks to, to craft a response. You're going to want an actual response if you want to get an actual answer. Yeah. You know, and, and you can look at those questions. I did look at them yeah. the other day because the first thing when I came in is I asked Alyssa, do we have a process? Mm -hmm. And from just a very quick look at the questions, it looked to me like the, all the things you just talked about, you know, those aspects of the job were covered pretty well. I had a couple thoughts of, you know, how they, how they could be rewritten a little bit and maybe we could all take a look at them and get our, you know, our, get our ideas to Alyssa. Mm -hmm. But I would suggest that we do that pretty quickly. So, so those do become a part of the process and we get those answers to those questions as a part of the application process. Okay. Yeah, I think we're all on the same wavelength here. I'm probably more nervous about the time. Having, 
having enjoyed the flu for several days. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Well, we're not okay. committing by saying we're if if we vote today on going doing the, the application process and that appointment process, we're not binding ourselves to when we make the appointment. Remember that. We're just saying which direction and yeah. want to go. Right. And if we were to do a special election, it would be a lot later anyway that we would be filling that. So I, I would suggest you not get hung up on, do we have enough time to do this and have somebody in the county attorney's position by like a day or two after the resignation or four days. We, you know, don't worry about that. So I know when then Lisa was starting to count or, and whatever, mm -hmm. and I asked about February 7th. So yes. really, so um, uh, it's just not an issue because we can appoint yeah. a temporary you know, can we appoint a temporary, or you can, you can you you. We're back to but, thinking it's well, already. I would think. I would think too. If we went the route of a special election, if if the election wasn't until we March 24, oh, it's clear we've got a gap. You, yeah. Then you, I mean, exactly. you're still dealing with the That's same the same right. thing That's for a longer right. amount of time. Yeah. So either way, you could potentially have a gap in there. Okay. So, I, um, does anybody want to make a motion at this point? Yeah, I'll make the motion then. I still feel this is in the best interest of the citizens here for the best vetting process, okay? So I move um, that we opt for the appointment um, choice with the details to be worked out over the uh, next week or so. Um, is that working for everybody? Okay. Uh, for the specific details on process to be worked out. And uh, we have not set an actual date, just we are aware of the deadline. So, so just so I'm clear, Got it. so you just, you are moving for the appointment, not putting a date in yet, and we'll get some other specific information that will be brought back at a future meeting so that we can set the date for when applications would be due and when we want to have the appointment. Is that well stated? Okay. <laughs> then I second the motion. <laughs> <laughs> a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion or no. any comments by the auditor or by Alyssa or anything else? No. Okay. Then Olson? Aye. Hedden? Aye. Merkin? Aye. And Alyssa, do you want to try to bring a timetable to us I'll on Tuesday? Tuesday? I'll get something on the agenda. I might not have the documentation here. Okay. You'll be able to discuss it next Tuesday. Okay. Super. Great. Super. Great. Thank Great. you very much. Lucy, thank you. It's a great presentation. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And I appreciate the dialogue here. I think we got some good clarification. Good. Okay. Then. We are on to departmental reports and other reports. We have none. We've already talked about our agenda for next Tuesday then. Thank you, Lucy. You're welcome. Happy right. New Year. Happy, yeah, Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. So we've already talked about one agenda item for next Tuesday. I know we think we've already got a fairly full agenda. Are there any other things that um, anybody wants to suggest for our agenda? Um, the only thing you might want to have on the agenda, and actually I was going to put it on our liaison assignments, is the Central Iowa Community Services um, did approve um, some legislative priorities um, that they um, voted on and passed that they are going to, um, it, it's in conjunction with what ISAC has, but it kind of expounds mm -hmm. on some areas. Um, I know that like up in um, the Blackhawk area, their Board of Supervisors actually looked and voted on those as well. Whether you want to do anything like that or if you want to just have acknowledgement of what CICS do you has. Do you have them available? I now? do. I actually brought copies of them along for you. Okay. We would need to get it on the agenda yet today. Mm -hmm. Yes, and like I said, I don't know if you want this as a something as the board to vote on because it is a something that CICS has opted to do, um, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention. And I don't know how many other regions their boards are voting on it. Um, what if you traditionally not, has what happened here has been um, uh, we tried for a couple of years. 
2017 and 2018 getting some uh, discussion going among staff that um, tried to do it after the November department head EO meeting. Um, and uh, I'd requested that. We had uh, some department heads who came, gave some feedback. Um, but it was given to Drew Camp because he was um, also, a, you know, lobbying, although it was for the ABC, and we didn't have an ISAC person there. And by the second year, it was less well attended by our department heads and EOs, and um, uh, it also didn't turn to be, seem to be very effective, and so I didn't even suggest it. Sure. You're talking about an event. I'm not sure that's what Mrs. Chong. Yes, does. I understand that. I know where I'm headed here about oh, us okay. endorsing particular okay. agenda. That's oh, where we're headed. Okay. okay. Right. And so, um, so my feeling is that um, there are several groups that are putting out uh, that we deal with or that we sit on boards of who are putting out their legislative priorities. And um, we certainly have ISAC's legislative priorities. And my feeling is we don't necessarily need to endorse all of those that, as it is, is work for the ones that we want to work for. And then um, we know that um, uh, with Sandra doing some coordinating and keeping us surprised of what's coming up, it seems like a lot of the legislative effort last year, I remember in January, et cetera, went into what popped up that wasn't on the radar. <laughs> so I don't think that we necessarily need to vote on CICSs and, or anybody else's. And that's else's. fine. And, that's fine. and yeah. then I've just got copies here just so that you're aware what they voted. Yeah, sure. On mm -hmm. Because they um, identified four priorities. Um, again, much of it is in concert with what ISEC already had mm -hmm. as their priorities, but just expounded on a little bit more. Um, these are not the exact same as what um, Blackhawk has um, because their region's a little different. So they're going to have some areas that, that they're going to say, hey, we want, we're elevating this issue more than, you know, another issue. Mm -hmm. um, so I will provide this um, to you what CICS has. I believe it's up on their website, but um, I do have one for um, uh, Shelly can have as well so that you are aware of what. Okay. So what CSS yeah, has is information. In looking at that and with ISIS. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's fine. That I give us more more talking points and more background as we talk Yes. About yes, yeah. And that's Good. that's fine. I just wanted to I'm glad to see bring, bring this to you. To do that. So mm -hmm. okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. Um any other upcoming agenda items? Just I'm assuming Squaw Creek will be coming up soon. Is that on the it's on the next Tuesday, isn't it? Okay, yeah, I can't see that. Okay, so thank you. Okay, thank thanks you. for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. I, I thought I, I thought I remembered you saying that you it was going to yeah, be on that, yeah. so, that one. So uh, yeah, we got that covered. Um, Not anything else that pops in my area. Okay, I did it. I did ask that. Um, I, I drafted a resolution for the Iowa Utilities Board regarding the Dakota Access Pipelines. Um, request to waive public hearing on their operating capacity proposed increase. And um, what I drafted urges IUB to hold a public hearing. So that'll be on next Tuesday's agenda okay. for your consideration. Um, I don't have, I don't think I have anything else. I don't think I do either. Oh, okay. Then we have public forum number two, comments from the public, items not on the agenda. The board may not take any action on the comments due to the open meetings law, but may do so in the future. Is there anybody, so I'll open public forum. Is there anybody from the public who would like to comment? Please move to the microphone. If not, I will close public forum. And then we'll go to liaison assignments, committee meetings, updates, and announcements from the supervisors. Um, I'll just give, I'm, I'm just going to go through next Tuesday. So I have a uh, um, uh, meeting with the chamber tomorrow with Dan uh, tomorrow morning. And then I have a mini assessors meeting on January 6th. Um, so those are my only upcoming meetings until we have our next meeting next Tuesday. 
Um, as far as meetings go, I have a date with my flu medication coming up here soon, okay? Um, and I don't have anything until after Tuesday. I do want to note I misspoke. Uh, the um, I said at uh, the 20, meeting on the 23rd that the Workforce um, Innovation and Opportunities Act appeal, uh, it, it had been upheld, but I said that we'd stay with right now for the six regions, and instead it's we're staying with the 15, and I misspoke okay. about that. So, okay, that's that's it for me. No. Okay. I have nothing to report at this point. So, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, Hedden? Aye. Olson? Aye. Merkin? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.